So I guess uh, we'll get it started, because uh, we don't have much time since it's a flash talk. <laughs> so hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Marcin Grzejstak. I'm working for Pivotal. Yeah, and I'm Jacob Kubrinski. I work for Code Archer and uh, the Skiller company. So thank you all for coming to the presentation called uh, Accurate Throwaway or Integration Tests. Uh, the first thing we'd like to say that we, we lied to you. Uh, the presentation title is actually a lie. Uh, not because of the content, because the content is going to remain true, but the title is a lie since Accurist has been acquired by Pivotal uh, and incorporated into Spring Cloud. So it no longer is named Accurist. The new name is uh, Spring Cloud Contract Verifier, at least for now. Uh, so yeah, that was the first big news. But the rest of the title is true. So yeah, throw away your integration test. Uh, why, do, why do we want to throw our uh, integration test away, so to speak? Uh, because there are, let's face it, pain in the ass. Uh, the biggest problem that we have in the integration test is the case of stubs. Uh, we wanted to create a tool that allows you to define stubs uh, or uh, contracts from which you can create stubs that are reusable, that you can trust, that are verified against the server side. Uh, so this was one thing why we created uh, 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 Spring Cloud Contract Verifier. And the second thing is to promote consumer-driven contract approach so that the consumers uh, help create proper API. Because the consumers are, are the ones that use the API uh, and they know how they want it to be done. So this is the introduction. Now let's move to the live coding section. Yeah, so the general idea behind a consumer-driven contract is that uh, uh, both me and Martin, we are really fan of TDD, which we call the uh, test-driven design, not development, but design, because uh, using tests and starting from tests allow us to create better uh, API uh, for, for our applications. So we thought that it would be cool if we could just elevate the test-driven design approach to the architecture level. And uh, generally, it, it's, the, the, it's something that already exists. Uh, we just uh, didn't know about that. So it's called a consumer-driven contract. So it means that we have two, two sides of this contract. First uh, side is the uh, client, and the second side uh, is the server, OK? And now we want to show you uh, how it works in case of we are uh, just implementing the server and the client side. I will just uh, uh, try to do one thing. Uh, this is actually our only slide, so there's not going to be any more. Yeah, I, I will turn off the presentation mode as this is big as a house, so probably there won't be a problem. So I have a server side, and uh, the, the business logic, uh, which is here, is, is generally doesn't matter, but uh, we, we have two separate projects. First project is the HTTP server. Uh, it's something that works as a fraud detection controller. So there is some REST controller that we used when we, when we call the put method on the fraud check uh, URL. Then we are doing the fraud check, and we are returning the fraud check result, which tells us uh, what is the fraud check status, which has two possible values, it's OK or fraud. And the second is that uh, we can also add a rejection reason here, OK? <clears throat> and uh, for the very beginning, we have just one uh, case where we return that the fraud check status is OK, and there is no reason for the client, OK? And that's cool. And, uh, but the question is, if this API is something that is OK for, the, for our customers. So uh, in our approach, we are defining the contract uh, using simple uh, groovy uh, DSL uh, file. So in this case, as you can see, uh, it's a contract. Uh, as you can see, we are already using the Spring uh, Cloud notation, and we are creating the contract. We are making the contract with request and response. And we are declaring that if you are going to use the put method and uh, put uh, some body on the fraud check, and this body contains client PESEL, which is a social security number, and contains loan amount, and header, which is a content type equal to application VND fraud v1 plus JSON, then the server should respond with the status 200 and with the body OK, rejection reason, which is null, 
uh, and the content type, which is similar uh, to the request. And <clears throat> here you can find some strange construct. It means because we are using this contra con contract to do two things. First is that we are going to stop this API for the client. So client is able to use the API even if the implementation doesn't exist yet. And the second one is the server side where we want to verify if the server really is uh, going OK with this contract. So if server declares that OK, if you uh, use some such uh, body, we should request with such response, OK? So we are checking if the uh, assert that rejection reason is null, OK? So you can call your own method to assert if the response is, is still OK. And now we can uh, simply uh, call the uh, Maven build to check if this API is correct. And if there will be any problem with this API, uh, which means that server is not uh, valid with the contract, there will be a uh, build error, which I will show you in a moment. So that's the server side. And what is important here is that uh, we are doing the normal Maven build, but also we are publishing the stops of the server so client can use those stops to make their own integration tests. So now I will move to the client side, and let's take a look how the client side looks like. So it's a normal Spring Boot application, classical Spring Boot application, which uh, has some logic which calls the uh, fraud detector, fraud check application, and checks what's happening here. And here we have also just one uh, use case where we are checking if the status is loan applied. And since we're doing microservices, you can see that we have a hard-coded port there and the address, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, <clears throat> here is the, uh, the test. Test for the client side in which we are creating the new loan application object. And we are calling the loan application on our system under test, which in this case is loan application service. And we are checking if the rejection result is equal to null. And if the loan application status is loan applied, OK? If you remember something that we have declared in our contract, that's exactly what's happening here. And I can show you what's happening in the loan application. There is sent request to fraud detection service and <clears throat> built response from request, uh, response from the result. And that's something uh, where here is the normal REST call. We are normally calling the REST service for on some particular uh, element. So now I can simply also clean install the client side and check if everything is working correctly. And let's see. Yeah, so the build is, is uh, as you can see, successful. So I've made a normal REST call, OK? And so how does it happen? OK, so Martin. Yeah, so <coughs> like the idea is that we've uh, run the tests of the client side, we called an application, which we didn't start, and the test didn't break. And that's because we are using Spring Cloud Contract Stub Runner. Now, <laughs> I had to remain, remember the, uh, the new name. Spring Cloud Contract Stub Runner that behind the scenes downloaded the stubs of your uh, collaborator of the server side. It started a fake HTTP server, and then actually your call uh, was, let's say, accepted by this stub of the HTTP server. Everything under the hood, the only thing that you have to do is to provide a, a artifact and group ID in the properties, uh, artifact and group ID of your collaborator, and automatically, behind the scenes, we're downloading stubs and, uh, f from an artifact or nexus, and we're starting the stubs of HTTP server. Yeah. So now let's try to uh, change it a little bit and say that, OK, so now the business comes to us and say, OK, so now we need to add additional functionality where we could be able to reject the client due to abnormal uh, loan amount. So I will do just a shortcut right now. So I've added an additional contract. This contract here is uh, should mark client as fraud. So the client appraisal is similar, but we say, OK, if the loan amount is high enough, then we should return the response with the fraud and amount too high. So let's try to build it now to check what will happen. Okay? So now I am building 
my application. And as you can see, the build has failed. Why? Because should mark client as fraud is not working anymore. Why it's not working? Because uh, our application is not longer valid with the contract. So we promised to our client that such requests should re re result with the fraud and amount to high, and we are simply not doing that. So what I can do now, I can just uncomment my code by adding the second branch, try to compile it one more time, and hopefully it will be successful. The important thing that from the contract, on this side, so on, the, on the server side, we're generating tests. That's why uh, one, uh, when we added a new contract, the auto-generated test has failed because we didn't have the implementation. And right now, Kuba has added the missing implementation and the test passed. So we will show the uh, generated tests, which are in target. Yeah, I'm just looking for that. Target, generated test sources. Contracts, yes. Contracts. OK. And as you can see, here is the test. And this test was fully automatically generated by the Accurest. And here is the contract should Spring mark. Spring Cloud Contract Verifier. Yes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Spring Cloud Contract, uh, which is a should mark client as fraud. And this test was generated by uh, this tool. OK, we can generate JUnit tests as well as the Spock tests. And here, as you can see, we are doing the, uh, we, we are building the request. We are doing the uh, call, and we are checking if the status is equal to 200, if the content type is OK, and if rejection result is amount to high and fraud check status is fraud. Okay? So that was generated by the accurate based on the contract. But now let's move to the client side, because on the client side, we also sh should be able to use uh, this second element. So let's try to. Um, ignore this test, and this test checks if I will make a, a call with such amount, I should get a, a loan application rejected. So I can run this code from uh, my ID. I can also run it from, from Maven, because there are normal tests, so you can just run it uh, from, from ID. And let's check what will happen. OK, so the test has failed. While because the loan application status is loan applied, and we're expecting the loan application rejected. Why? Because I haven't added this feature here. Uh, I've got correct response, but I wasn't passing it. So let's me, let me run it one more time and check if everything is successful. And as you can see, everything is working. Okay, so the good news is that we have the contract, which was declared, which was discussed with the customer, and then we are verifying both sides of the contracts. We are checking if the server is compliant to this contract, and if the client is using this contract correctly by doing the real REST calls, but without real application, okay? Because uh, we were working with Martin on a big project with uh, using the microservice architecture, and it was really a pain in the neck to have the whole environment up and green. So it meant that if you were doing your own deployment and you were trying to run integration tests, the other microservices had some issues. There were no app or something like that, so we were unable to make the pipeline green. So we said, okay, it's enough. We need to change this, and we need to replace it with something that will be more valuable. And that's why Accurest has occurred. Yes, since we're running out of time, let's move to the summary. So uh, what Kuba has shown you was the full cycle, I mean, extremely fast for a flash talk, uh, showing you how you can do TDD on our architecture level. So the consumer suggested the contract. Uh, he worked, let's say, offline with the stops um, uh, defined from the contract on the server side. He could even write his implementation, even though the implementation on the server side doesn't exist. And then the server side, uh, let's say, accepted this uh, contract, uh, wrote uh, the missing implementation, and both sides were, let's say, compatible with the contract. So what is important is that using CDC, so consumer-driven contracts, with Spring Cloud Contract Verifier, uh, you can create an API in a very nice way since the consumer is driving the change. 
Um, it ensures that the stubs and the, uh, see the stubs are up to date because uh, creating the stubs is part of the building process. So if your application is not telling the truth in the contract, it will not be built. Thus, you will not be able to publish the contracts into an access or an artifactory. Uh, integration tests can reuse the stubs. So the, it's not the client that is doing the stubbing because he can stub it, like, uh, write everything in the stub methods. Here is the server side that uh, defines the contract and uh, let's say the, the stubs are checked against the server side. What is crucial about Sprinkler Contract Verifier is that we not only support HTTP but also messaging. So if you're using messages via uh, Camel, uh, Spring Integration or Spring Cloud Stream, out of the box we can uh, help you write proper API in terms of messages. And last but not least, uh, if you're using Spring Cloud, uh, you don't actually need service discovery in, in, in your integration tests because Spring Cloud Contract Verifier will stop the uh, service discovery um, uh, implementation that you have. So regardless whether you have console, Eureka, or Zookeeper, it doesn't matter because we're going to stop it anyways. Yeah, so that means you can use uh, microservices architecture you can build distributed systems without doing end-to-end -end integration tests, which means it's much faster, much more reliable, and you can add a lot of different things into your contract, uh, into your build pipelines, like we are, for example, verifying using the version which is already on production, version we are going to put into the production to check the backward compatibility. So there's a lot of things that you can do using just a simple but powerful tool we've built. So thank, thank you. you very much. If you have and any questions. Have a nice day.